provocative and controversial designs characterized Tom Ford's reign at Gucci. He made Gucci sexy by showcasing a half-naked model and a raunchily presented letter G. Ford even had a full frontal nude as the brand's fragrances face. But the designer from Texas has been celebrated as Gucci's real savior. Tom Ford was appointed as the creative designer at Gucci in 1994. At the time, the fashion house was going through its most challenging phase. Dawn Mello, the previous chief designer, had just walked out and sales were dropping. The brand had a negative net worth of 17.3 US dollars in 1991. Gucci's heir, Maurizio Gucci, was not helping the situation because he was overspending and had overlicensed the brand, causing a loss of over 22 million US dollars in 1993 alone. Maurizio Gucci also had a personal debt of over 40 million US dollars. The situation was so dire that Gucci's publicist was begging fashion editors to attend Tom Ford's debut women's wear show. However, journalists were begging to be let in by 1995. In this video, we will tell you the story of how Tom Ford saved Gucci from bankruptcy. We will tell you what role Tom Ford played in making Gucci what it is to today. But first, welcome to our YouTube channel. Like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss a video. Tom Ford is a celebrated icon in the fashion industry who began his illustrious fashion career at Gucci. Tom Ford's role at Gucci is even featured in Ridley Scott's film, House of Gucci. Lady Gaga stars in the film as Lady Gucci, with Adam Driver as Maurizio Gucci, her husband. The film offers a glimpse of Tom Ford, a role played by Reeve Carney, an American actor. Though the film did not heavily feature Tom Ford, Gucci has him to thank in real life. Tom Ford saved the fashion house from bankruptcy in the 1990s and transformed it into the successful brand it is today. But how did he do it? Guccio Gucci founded the fashion house in 1921. Gucci rose to fame by selling artisanal leather handbags, goods and accessories. Maurizio Gucci and Don Mello, Gucci's creative director, hired Tom Ford in the 1990s. Tom Ford was by then an upcoming American designer from Texas. Gucci hired Tom to help revamp the fashion house and oversee the women's ready-to-wear collection. Tom Ford stayed away from Gucci's framed artisanal leather products during the early days of his career at the fashion house. He introduced his own vision for Gucci. Tom Ford, a Parsons School of Designs graduate, first worked at Perry Ellis. Tom Ford relocated to Europe in 1990 to work for Gucci. He told the New York Times in 1996 that he had to leave America if he was going to become a good designer. He explains that his culture was limiting him. He described the style in America as tacky. After designing women's ready-to-wear, Tom Ford undertook menswear and shoes half a year later. Tom Ford became the design director at Gucci following the departure of Richard Lambertson. He oversaw its fragrances, ready-to-wear, advertising, images and store designs. Tom Ford was mostly overshadowed in his early years and Maurizio almost fired him on more than one occasion. Tom Ford's talent would eventually prevail. Gucci CEO, Domenico De Sol, appointed Tom Ford as the creative director in 1994 after Maurizio's departure. Ford, using his signature style, quickly transformed the fashion house. Ford's 1995 collection featured a slew of sexy white dresses with provocative cutouts. The collection became an instant hit. He introduced an entire range of bags, boots, sleek suits, skinny satin shirts, velvet trousers, and even G-strings. In 1996, Ford showcased hyper-sexy outfits for women, hip-hugging trousers for men, and sleek suits. Both female and male models were donning strings, making several conservative fashion editors blush. Gucci was becoming sexy. Gucci's seduction permeated ads made Gucci sexy off and on the runway. Ford continued to produce scandalous campaigns, 
which earned him the reputation of being fashion's greatest provocateur. Tom Ford's policy at Gucci had proved to be effective despite severe criticism. The buzz was escalating and sales were boosting. Ford's role at Gucci was getting increasingly important. Tom Ford redesigned the campaign aesthetic while fashion campaigners were old-fashioned with a more provocative and controversial approach. In 2003, Ford showcased a half-naked model and a raunchily presented letter G. The campaign skyrocketed Gucci's sales and brand image, cementing Tom Ford as a fashion trailblazer. Despite all the controversial and provocative campaigns, Tom Ford would years later tell Vogue France that he is not into gratuitous provocation. He defended his campaigns by saying that he was supporting sexual equality when he used a full frontal male nude as M7's fragrance's face. Ford would dress Hollywood stars in Gucci on red carpets. Tom Ford is behind the following red carpet designs. Madonna's bedazzled lilac trousers during the 1999 Grammys. Jennifer Lopez's sparkly dress during the VH1 Fashion Awards. Charlie's Theron's dress during the 2004 Oscars. Let's go back to memory lane and see how Tom Ford saved Gucci from bankruptcy. During Maurizio's tenure, which is from 1989 to 1993, Gucci's finances were in hot soup. Maurizio, Gucci's successor, was very extravagant and over-licensed the brand. Forbes reported that Maurizio lost over 22 million US dollars in 1993 alone. Ford managed to spike revenues to over 500 million US dollars in 1995 after he became the brand's creative director. Gucci's revenue and earnings continued to increase under Ford's management. Gucci's market value was over 4 billion US dollars when Francis Pinault's Caring Group bought it in 1999. Tom Ford left Gucci after a 14-year reign and with a legacy of over 10 billion US dollars in brand value. Tom Ford played a crucial role in revamping Yves Saint Laurent after the Gucci Group acquired it in 1999. After many heated negotiations, Tom Ford and Domenico Del Sol, Gucci's CEO, left to start their new label in 2004. Though there were so many rumors that the departure was about money issues, Tom Ford clarified it was about control. The Gucci Museum opened in Florence in 2011. The exhibition included signature red carpet dresses, Gucci floral, leather bags and goods from Gucci's early years. The Tom Ford decade was simply brushed out of the fashion brand's history. This was a clear indication that Gucci still held a grudge against Tom Ford. The museum opened two additional rooms in 2016, dedicated solely to Ford's legacy. The rooms contain exhibits that Alessandro Michael handpicked. These exhibits include chubby, colorful furs, the slithery white dresses with provocative cutouts, and the scandalous ads which have acquired a nearly cult status. It is worth noting that Tom Ford interviewed Michelle when joining the brand. Michelle's nerd aesthetic style is strikingly different from Tom Ford's bold style. After all, it is the only reason that Gucci finally did justice to Tom Ford's contribution to the fashion brand's history. If it were not for Tom Ford, perhaps there would not have been the Gucci we know today. What do you think about Tom Ford's role at Gucci? Do you think his designs were provocative? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so that you don't miss our next video. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.